Okay, so we're up to class 22 and we're going to continue our discussion of pricing life insurance. Last time we talked about the mortality table and the symbols. We'll be using some of the symbols. We talked about the Q and the P for probability of death or more, your mortality rate and P, which is probability of living. We're mainly going to focus on the L's and the D's, the number of people alive and the number of people dead that died during the years. Remember, the people alive is at the beginning of the year. The people who die, if they die during the year, they die at the very end of the year, just to keep things simple. And actually, that's what actuaries do in practice, especially for the statutory accounting that we'll talk about later. And then they make adjustments to account for the fact that people die evenly throughout the year and pay premiums throughout the year. So let's, let's price some products. I'm going to do all of this in Excel. My guess is on the final exam, you'll probably do all of it in Excel as well. So uh, take good notes. Um, I'll try to go slowly enough so you can follow me as I reference the mortality table. Um, you can always, I, I wouldn't let the video continue unless you're getting the exact same answer I'm getting. So if you're not getting the same answer, pause it. See if you can catch up, rewind. Don't go on to another problem because these problems, they, they build on each other. We do a single premium and we do a, a one year life insurance and then we start doing multiple years with multiple premium payments. And once you get to three or four of them, you start discovering that there's really only one formula. It just all you need to know is how many D's in the numerator, if it's life insurance, how many L's in the numerator for premium payments premium payers and so you're gonna see that you're gonna see a pattern here that's gonna get easier and easier as we go but you definitely don't want to move on to the next product unless you've got the previous one because they do build on each other so looking at Excel I've got all the problems from the class notes I'm going to do them one at a time and I'll just leave the problem there so you can see it So let's start with the most simple one, which is annual renewable term. Remember in the first article for paper one, their model was annual renewable term, which is a very, very simple policy. You're only buying insurance for one year. You may have some guaranteed renewability, which means they, they can raise the premium, but only for the group of insureds. They can't raise the premium because of your specific health, but still the premium will go up as you age and especially once you get above a certain age like 50 or 60 you start rising pretty quickly so here's the first problem problem it's an annual renewable term the face of the problem is it's ten thousand dollars so we want to get that loaded in the rate we're going to use the discount is five percent you see that in problems so the face I, I tend to use smaller face amounts I might get up to 100,000, but I just, it, it gets messy with the math to do that, that, do larger numbers. The issue age is 30 years old. That's going to be important because that's where we're going to pull our data. So what we need to do is get L30 and D30 for this policy. So I'm going to go up and get L30. They're the ones that are going to pay our premium. So you see L30 is right there, line 11, so B11. And then our D30s, it's going to be right there, D11. So B11 is the number of people alive. D11 are the number of people who die at the end of the year. And so to do the premium, the premium is going to be we're going to take how many people die, that's D30, times, times the face amount, which is $10,000, divided by, now remember, we're assuming these people all die at the very end of the year. So we're going to divide that by 1 plus 5% raised to the 1, because it's one year from now. So there's our numerator. Our denominator is just going to be the premium payers, L30. And they're paying us today, so we don't have to do any discounting there at all. And so when we do that math, we get D30, that's 172 people, times $100,000, divided by 1 plus 5%. 
we take all of that and divide it by L30. And it's, I did, oh, I'm sorry, L30. And we get the premium. It's not a very high premium. It's only a, a $10,000 policy, but essentially it'd be a little over a dollar, dollar a month. Um, something, you know, probably about a dollar twenty or so a month. Um, you can divide that by 12. So yeah, a dollar 40 a month. But $16.52 is your, your premium. We're going to actually test this. So each time we do this, we're going to test it. On the exam, you will have to do this particular exercise that I'm doing now. It obviously is much more complex than just an annual renewable term, but it will be the same type of problem. So what we're going to do when we test these things is we're going to talk, start off at time zero. And in this one, all we have is time zero and time one because it's all out annual renewable terms. It was only one thing. So what happens at time zero? We collect the premium and we invest it at 5% because that's our, that's our investment return. It's our investment return and our, our discount rate. So we collect the premium. We want to take L30 times the premium because their L30s are going to pay it. So we take L30, 99,141 times our premium. And now we're going to invest it at 5%. And then time one comes along. And here we have our portfolio matures. So you take that, that money we invested and you multiply by one plus the discount times the investment rate. We'll end up with a very round number because you know it's just one year out. And then right after maturity, portfolio matures, we're gonna pay our claims. So here we just take the times zero premium times one plus point zero five. And then our death claims, which is going to take D30 times our face amount, which is $10,000. So 30,000, 30, D30 times $10,000. And we get ending value, and your ending value should be exactly zero. And by ending value, that's what we mean by ending value for a this is the net premium. So we're actually doing the net premium. Remember the net premium only covers you for your expected death benefits. We expect 172 people to die. We have 99,141 paying us the premium. So, um, so we expect um, 1,720,000 to die. So that's our net premium. Our gross premium would include something for expenses. So there's some uncertainty there. Maybe we thought we we're gonna spend $10,000 in expenses and maybe we spent 11,000 or 9,000. So there's some risk there. We also have the 5% that we're assuming for the investment return, but maybe we only make four and a half percent or maybe we make five and a half percent. So there's some uncertainty there. Uh, and then we have our cost of capital and, and our capital. So we're not addressing the capital side here at all. We do that in my PNC class because it's a more comprehensive formula. In this class, we're focusing solely on the, uh, the net premium. So what that means is a few more people could die than the 172 or a few fewer could die than 172. In this case, we're probably really expecting fewer than 172 because this is actually a statutory table, which means it's quite conservative. So the actual number will probably be much lower than that. But you see how we got this first problem all set up? And so you'll see, see me doing this time zero, time one, time two, time three, over and over again. All right. So hit pause if you couldn't get these numbers. Um, I'll actually put, I'll put the formulas off to the side so you can see them. <clears throat> All 
and um, make sure it's probably very important. Try to use try to use the exact same cells I'm using. That way your formulas will be the same. So if you didn't do that on this one, I started everything and um, on line 90. And so try to use the exact same spacing I'm using. That way uh, your formulas will be exactly the same as mine. So I'm going to go down to this next problem. Uh, problem two, we'll make it a little bit more, more complicated. We're going to do a level term policy. So on line 20, 122, I'll put the face of the policy in. So it's a three-year face is $10,000. Our rate, again, is 5%. Be careful on the exam. You don't assume a 5% discount rate. Sometimes I might make it 4 or 3, but uh, you know, do look at that. And then the issue age for this one is again 30 years old so I kept that the same but it's a three-year policy but it's a single premium so we're going to keep it really simple simple so we have three-year policy if the if a term policy is three years you will have three D's starting with the first year year 30 so D30 D31 D32 so let me go get those D30 is that 172 we had before and I can just copy those down and you see our D30 is 172 you can even go back up here 172 176 181 and that's what we have here 172 176 181 now with that we'll have our premium so let's look at the premium here and it's going to look very similar to the premium we had up here up here, remember, we had D30 times 10,000 divided by 1 plus the rate divided by the premium payers. So we're going to have the same thing here. But in this case, we're going to have a numerator that's going to be a lot more involved. So we're going to have D30 times the face. And that we are going to pay in exactly one year. So we take 1 plus 5% raised to the 1 plus D31 times $10,000 divided by 1 plus 5% raised to the second because we're going to pay the D31s at the end of the second year plus D32 times $10,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 year raised to the third. We need that entire thing. So D30 times 10,000 over 105 to the first. D31 times 10,000 divided by 1.05 to the second. Plus D32 times 10,000 divided by 1.05 to the third. So then our denominator is very easy. We just need L30. So let's get L30 in there. So hook up there, same number we had before, 99141. So let's see if we can get this to work the first time. So we take D30 times $10,000 divided by 1 plus 5% raised to the first. I'm going to use extra parentheses just to make sense. Sure. Plus D32, I mean 31 times $10,000 divided by 1 plus 5%. All of that raised to the second. Make sure your parentheses are in the right place. Plus D32 times $10,000. I forgot to hit the $10,000 here. Just a second, I'll fix that. 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the third. Let me go back and fix this. That 10,000 should be your reference. We take all of that and divide it by L30. I don't know if this is all going to fit in there, but we'll see. So 
there's our formula and we get $48.40. When we did one year, it was $16, so it's not quite three times as much. Even though a few more people are dying, it's not just three times as much as the first year because we are discounting these back at a pretty high rate, 5%. So let's try this one. This is a little bit more work. We're going to have a time zero, a time one, a time two, and a time three. So at time zero, we're going to collect the premium, and we're going to invest premium at 5%. So we'll collect our premium here. We're going to take L30 times the premium. So L30 is the 99.141 times the premium. So there's our premium. We're going to invest that at 5%. So at time one, the portfolio matures. You put, I'll put the formulas off to the side again. So our portfolio matures, we just take that portfolio we have times one plus our, di our discount rate, our investment rate. So you take the premium times one plus 0 0.05. And it looks like a huge number, but remember it's gotta cover us not just this year, but for three death benefits. So here we're gonna pay claims. To pay claims, we're going to take D30 times the face amount. So D30 times $10,000. We've seen that number before. So invest the remaining amount at 5%. So that didn't change. So we take Portfolio minus our claims. Let me put the claim link, put these in the two decimal places. So there's our ending portfolio. We're going to reinvest that at 5%. Now at time two, it's the exact same thing. The portfolio matures. That didn't change any. That's the same as before. So we take that amount times one plus our investment rate. So here it's not the premium, but it's the remainder. I don't know if I can get all this to fit. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> And then we're going to pay claims. Here we're going to take D31 times our face amount, which is $10,000. So D31 times our face. And how, now we're going to invest the remaining at 5% just like we did before. So what is that remaining? It's just going to be how much we had from the portfolio from the previous year. So now we got 1723. So, you know, if we think about this, we know we're going to be paying 181 times 10,000. So we need, we know we need exactly $1,810,000. So hopefully we multiply this by 5%. That's what we'll get. So we do the exact same thing again. Portfolio matures. We take that times one plus the rate. Hopefully we get a very, very round number. Yeah, that looks pretty round. It's the exact same thing we we did. We just take the prior remaining times 1.05, and now we're going to pay claims again. The exact same thing again, where we're going to take D32 times 10,000. So D32 times our face. Okay. 
So net ending value, it should be zero. Let's see, we have a portfolio minus our claims. So we know it worked out. Now on the exam in the past, um, the, um, these were done by hand and so you could have rounding issues. So for example, if, if this 4840 was instead a, a rounded number, so if I just type 48.4, you will have a lot left over here because the actual premium is not 48.4, it's 48.3959. So, so if you do this in Excel, you'll get exactly a difference of zero, which is one of the comforts of doing this in Excel. Um, so um, on the exam where you'd have to do it on paper, you, you will have a difference and you just know that's due the rounding. You can see that was a pretty big difference. And that's because the premium was 38, Point three nine five nine something, so it was pretty far away from forty eight forty, and so you're off of four hundred dollars. So, um, all right. So let me just real quickly, just what are we looking for on the exam now? That we've done these three problems. Um, some exam questions, like on this first one, all I'll ask for is for you to calculate the number, the actual premium. You'll be showing all your work. So we have these we have these premiums uh, 1652 or 4840. I might ask you to show the formula. In that case, this is how I want you to write it. D30, I want you to actually get the number. I don't want it to be 172 times 10,000. Just write D30, use symbols. So the problem will actually say show the formula for but do not solve and only use symbols so there is the solution there um, here's here's the solution here for just showing the formula and then the last thing I might that on at least one of the problems I'll ask you to actually give me this entire schematic and so in this case you'll have to work this through so one of the problems you have to do that. So most problems, you'll just you'll just write the equation. For a couple of the problems, you actually calculate the premium. So I can make sure you know how to pull the numbers from the mortality table, and you can actually put this into a calculator and get it to work. And then one of the problems, actually the longest problem, you'll see when we're going to practice one, I'll, I'll require you to, to put all this out there. Um, all right. So let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is not much different than the second problem. You'll see why here pretty soon. Um, so if you look at this third problem, we're going to do a single premium whole life policy. So it is it is actually possible to have a single premium whole life that's more likely than a single premium level term. So let me start on line 160. So again, we'll put the face in. The face again is $10,000. The rate again is 5%. The issue age here is 97. So when you see the word whole life, you know that the debt Ds can go all the way to the end of the table, all the way up to D99. Some mortality tables even go beyond D99. The more recent ones I've seen up, in, up to 125 years. So if I gave you a whole life at that table, you'd have to go all the way out to year 125 or until everybody dies. And the mortality tables that go out to 125 years, there is no one alive after, say, year 110 or so. But uh, whatever that last number you have, once everybody's dead, that's when you, you finish with the policy. Um, so the premium here is going to look an awful lot like the premium for the level terms. So we're going to take... D97 times the face divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the first plus D98 times 10,000 divided by 1, 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the second 
plus D99 times $10,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the third. And we're going to take all of that and divide it by L97. So I might ask you to do this, this part of the problem to show the formula. So let's let's actually calculate this premium. So we take, oh, before I do that, I'm gonna move this down a few rows. Let's get everything in there. We need L97, we need D97, D98, and D99. So let's go get those L97, very end of the table is 626, D97, is 301, then we need 214 and 111, so we can just copy those down, 214 and 111. Remember on this one, this is whole life, so this is really unique for whole life. If you think about this product, we're gonna get premiums from 626 people, and then we're going to pay $10,000 to 626 people, but over time. So this premium is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of $10,000. It won't be 10,000 because that'll be too much. If we collected $10,000, on time zero from these people and then invested it five percent and then paid out the ten thousand over time ten thousand be way too high so where will this premium be probably around ninety two hundred dollars or so we'll just see five percent is a pretty good high discount rate so let's try the premium so we take d97 times times ten thousand dollars divided by one plus five percent raised to the first plus D98 times $10,000. I don't know why I'm putting that number in there. Divided by one plus 5%. Here raised to the second plus D99. Everybody else dies. No one's left. One plus 5% raised to the third. We take all of that and divide it by L97. And sure enough, we get $9,211.77. Nine so there's the answer to your problem. Now let's work this one out. It's going to look an awful lot like the level term one, but just to get practice. So we have time zero, time one, time two, time three. So time zero, we're going to collect the premiums just so you get used to this order. And we're going to invest at 5%. So collect the premium. We want to take the L97s times our premium. L97 times the premium. Hopefully you're getting the exact same answers I'm getting. Invest that at 9%, and then at time one, the portfolio is going to mature. It's going to be a pretty large number because we're going to be only paying out the D97s. So we're going to have a lot of money left. So we'll take that value that we got last year. We invested it at 5%. So here's our value today. So it's going to be the premium times 1 plus 0 0.05. And then we're going to pay claims. We're going to pay claims to our D97s, $10,000. So D97 times the face. And just like we did before, remainder invested at 5%. So we take portfolio maturity value minus what we paid out in claims, and that will give us our net remainder. So in time two, we do the same thing. Portfolio matures. So we just take the remainder. Last period times one plus 0 0.05.
So when we do that, we just take that prior amount times 1 plus 5%. And again, we're going to pay claims. Here are our claims. It's going to be D98 times $10,000. So you can see how redundant these get. And though we only have one, well, we have a couple of little bells and whistles still to add, but nothing quite dramatically here. So plus that minus that and again this remainder yeah I, sorry I can't spell here the remainder invested at, at 5% time 3 exactly the same thing the portfolio matures we're going to pay claims and here the remainder if we did it right should be 0 So let's draw that. Maturity ma ma portfolio matures. So we take that times one plus our rate. Now, when I hit enter, I better get a very, very round number, like 1,110,000 or something. Let's see. And I didn't. So. And I've got an error right here. Hopefully y'all saw that. I, I hit the wrong line. So hopefully y'all noticed that. I have one line 162. That was the issue age. So I missed it by one line. So fix that formula. I could tell that there was something wrong. So my L, I'm sorry, the D97 is actually line 164. So if you go back up to line 168, You'll notice that it's it's different now, so sorry about that. But that's one thing about doing this in Excel. You'll know very quickly if you got the right answer. So there we got what we expected. So we're going to pay claims. So here is just the remainder times the prior year's the, the, the prior year's remainder times one plus 0 0.05. Our pay claims we're going to do D99 times ten thousand. So D99 times our face and of course when we do that I'll be exactly left with zero so there's our final answer how much would be off if you're using a rounded number you can see here we're only off a dollar seventy, and that's probably because it wasn't rounding all that much. Just 0.23. So, all right. So there we got two problems, and we we worked out the longer answer here. So you can see we're we're closing in on. Um, I'm definitely getting um, getting used to this pattern. Uh, it's going to get it a little redundant, so probably in the next problems I'll start copying. And when we copy, it's going to save us some time because we're doing essentially if we have three years, we're going to be doing the exact same thing probably for three or four, three of those years, if not all four. All right. Okay. So there's our first three problems. So how can we how can we mix this up? One thing we've got to do is have more than one premium payer, more than one premium payment. And so what we'll do with this last one this next one, excuse me, what we'll do this next one is we're going to do a level term policy and all it says is level term. That's one thing you'll notice, and this is really, really important in the exam because I expect you to have to, you know, know these terms. So if it just says level term, doesn't say anything else, then you have your number of D's 
n number of L's equal the term. So here we have a three-year level term, so we should have three D's in the numerator and three L's in the numerator. If it's anything else, I have to tell you. So if it's single premium, I have to tell you that it's single premium. If it's limit pay, where you only make two premium payments, I'll have to tell you that specifically. But if I don't tell you specifically, you pay premiums every year that you pay a, 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 a death claim. So if you're doing D30, D31, and D32, then you're going to have L30, L31, L32. So if you said level term and nothing else in the description, the number of years of your level term, that's going to be the number of D's and number of L's. If you see the word ordinary whole life, that means D's and L's go to the end of the mortality table. That is to D99 and to L99. So the word ordinary tells you you go it's not the whole life whole life can be single per premium like we did there on our our second example or third example what we just did whole life can be limit pay where you might have a policy that that could go to age 99 but you only pay premiums for the first five or ten years I'd have to tell you that so if it's single premium I have to tell you that if it goes for five years and then stop premium payments I have to tell you that but if it says ordinary whole life if you come up on the exam and ask me how many years of the premium payments, I won't tell you because it's in the title ordinary. All right. So if I don't tell you the number of premium payments, you assume your D's and the L's are all exactly the same. Now there's one exception when we do an endowment, and I'll show you that one exception. But generally, anytime you see, well, other than endowments, uh, if you don't see anything telling you the time period, assumes the D, assume the D's and the L's are exactly the same. Very, very important. All right, so let's start uh, line 98. The face here, I went a little crazy and did 100,000. That's fine. We can handle 100,000. The rate, again, is 5%. And then the issue age here is, for some reason, 50. I don't know why I jumped up to 50. All right, so... What we have to do here, we have quite a bit to collect because we're going to have people at age 50 paying a premium, age 51 paying a premium, and age 52. So if it's a three-year level term, your L's, you'll have three of those, and your D's, you'll have three of those. So let's go get our L50. And let's go get our D50. Make sure you're getting the same number as I am. And then you can just copy those down and that will give you the 51, 52. So there's our numbers. So here, our premium is going to be a lot different than if it was only one premium up front. If it's one premium up front, it's going to be a really large premium. So we didn't do that with a 50-year-old, but we did it with a 30-year-old. Um, and we got $48.40. Um, I can show you this one with a single premium versus multiple premiums. So let's do it as multiple premiums first and then I'll come back and show you. So, so what is your premium here? All right, so this is going to be pretty involved. So let's, let's break up the numerator from the denominator. You already know the numerator is exactly the same thing as we did before. It's D50 times $100,000 divided by 1 plus the rate, raise to the first, plus D51 times $100,000 divided by 1 plus the rate, raise to the second, plus D52 times the face, $100,000, divided by 1 plus 0 0.05, raised to the third. That's no different than before. Before we did that, remember up here with the level term, and with the, with the single premium term, 
D30 times 10,000 divided by 1.05 to the first all the way. It looks exactly the same except for starting at D50 instead of D30. So no difference there. So what do we do about these premium payers? So you probably, I'm guessing this is the first class in any of your college career where you're actually going to discount something other than a dollar amount. All right, so your, your parents have probably told you never do this, don't discount people, but we're going to actually discount people. So what we're going to do is we're going to take L50 and divide it by 1 plus 0 0.05. But when does that first premium get paid? It gets paid a year earlier than the first death benefit. So we're going to raise it to the 0. You don't have to actually write that because 1.05 raised to the 0 is just 1. But that's what we're doing. It's one year earlier plus L51. There's no claim, no dollar amount. This is only people that we're actually discounting. 1.05 raised to the first plus L52 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the second. So you notice throughout that the premiums in is exactly one shorter than the D's. All right, so let's let's try this all in one huge formula. Let's see if we can get it to work. So D fifty times a hundred thousand divided by one plus five percent raised to the first. There's the first one plus D51 times $100,000 divided by 1 plus the rate to the second plus D52 times the face divided by 1 plus 5 percent raised to the third. I'm going to hit enter here even though we're not done just so you can see if you get the right numerator number. So you might try that just to make sure you're getting the right numerator. 183, if I did it right, 254940.07. I hope I don't have a parentheses problem anywhere in there. It looks like it's correct, but we'll see. All right, so you might hit freeze if you're not getting that to work, and then look at the formula. And then we're going to divide that by L50. And we're going to divide that by 1, but I'm not going to bother doing it, plus L52 divided by 1 plus the rate raised to the first, plus L52 divided by 1 plus the rate raised to the second. And there's our premium. Let's see if it's correct, all right? Hopefully you're getting that same answer. So let's try it now. We're gonna have time zero, time one. This one gets a little more interesting. Time two, because if we did it right, we should at the very end have nothing. Time zero, we're gonna collect the premium and reinvest at 5%. The next year, our portfolio is going to mature. Here, though, we're going to collect the premium. We're going to pay claims. And we're going to reinvest whatever is left at 5%. And we're going to do that exact same thing at time two. And at time three, we will not collect the premium. So make sure you have three premium collections. One, two, three at times zero. Remember, times, times zero, time one, and time two. So there's your three premium collections. You have three claims payment. One, two, three at time one, two, and three. So the exact same number, but just uh, one year off. <clears throat> So here, here I'm going to take my L50 times the premium. So my L50 times my premium. It's going to be a pretty massive number because this is a $100,000 policy. Oops, sorry. Wrong line, but anyway. So at, at time zero, we collect our premium. 
L50 times the premium. Our portfolio matures. I'm not going to do all the formulas here. Hopefully you can follow me here. So, so we just take that premium and we multiply by 1 plus the 5%. Here we collect our premium, so L51 times the premium. L51 times the premium. We're going to pay claims, that's going to be D50 times the face times 100,000. Now I probably should have done it in different order. It doesn't really matter. These two things happen at the same time. Technically, we're going to pay the claim one second before we pay the collective premium. So we pay the claim the very, very last second of the time of the first year, and we collect the premium the exact first second at the beginning of year two. So these two things happen at the same time. So we'll take D50 times $100,000. And so our remainder here is the maturing portfolio plus the premium minus how much we paid in claims. This formula I will copy over just so you make sure you can see it. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing again. Our portfolio is going to mature, multiplying it by five percent. So there's there's our portfolio. Then we're going to collect the premiums. This is our last premium, L52 times the premium. We don't get any more premiums. So L52 times our premium. And we're going to pay claims D51 times the face. So D51 times our face. And again, our remainder is our beginning portfolio plus our premiums, minus our claims. Same formula as before. Now, portfolio matures. It better come into a very, very round number. So we take that times, if I did the formula right, I did the premium right, I should get a very, very round number. It should be like 7 million, 29, $22,900,000. Then we're gonna pay our, our, our Death claims D52 times 100. So D52 times 100,000. And so then how much is left? We take that minus that, and we have exactly nothing left. And that reinvests at 5%. There's nothing to reinvest. We're done. Now here's one where you can get a really big difference if you round it. So 695.29, we're only about 74. So it really depends on what the number itself is. Here, yeah, this one was 28.98 cents. So that 0.98 is pretty close. So it was almost exactly 29 cents. So we didn't get much of a difference. All right, so we've got our premium. We've got our formula. And we've got all of the time. So I like doing this schematic because it really does demonstrate if, if you really understand what's going on with each of these. Now I asked the question, what if this had been single premium? So I'm going to do this again, but I just want to compare it. So we'll bring this down. What if it had been single premium? The premium shouldn't be, all right, so I'm gonna go back up and reference, just bring these down so I don't have to go find them again. So everything is the same, 695, 29, everything's the same, but we're gonna do a single premium. So if it's a single premium, all we need is L50. So let's take out 
everything but L50. You can see our premium now is 19. So it's not quite three times as much, I don't think. Let's take three times the other premium. Actually, well, let's see. Yeah, it's not quite three times as much. It's awfully close. It's about $100 less. Um, so the difference is on the $695, you'll have to pay this three times if you live. Now, if you die at 50 or 51, you only have to pay it once. But if you live to be 60 years old, you'll have to pay $695.29 three times at the beginning of L50, at 51, L51, and beginning of L52. This premium you'd only pay at l 50. So here we don't have any premium to collect. Here we don't have any premium premium to collect. So it still works out, but the premium is not quite three times as much if it's a single premium because you have the money earlier, so you get more investment income. So it cuts about a hundred bucks, uh, about four percent off of the premium by doing single premium up front. All right. So just just to be able to compare those two, um, you can ballpark what these should be. So um, you know, you get some idea of how the you know what number, what ballpark number you should have. All right. Now the next problem, boy, I don't you know if I want to do the entire next problem. So I think what I'm going to do on this next problem, I'll bring it down. You're going to see that it's there's not much to this one. We've kind of already done it. So you can see it's there's that word ordinary. We talked about the word ordinary. So let's set up the, the factors. The face again is one hundred thousand dollars. The rate again is five percent. And the issue age unusually is ninety-seven. You can see why I won't give you a whole life at age 50. It, just, it would just take way too long. So the premium is going to look an awful lot. I mean, you can see it right there. It's set up. I won't give you the formula again. D97 times 100,000 divided by 1.05 to the first. D98, and then you put it to the second. And D99 to the third in the premiums. L97, but not times anything, just L97 raised to the one, raised, divided by one, because 105 to the zero. 98 raised to the one, and 99 raised to the second. All right, so let's see if we can get this premium in here. Before we do that, we need to have L97, L98, L99, D97, D98, D99. I'd recommend you hit pause on this video and you go work this problem see if you get what premium you get and then try it against mine I'm gonna keep going but you can hit pause right now and see if you can get it I'm gonna go a little bit quicker So let's see if I get the premium. You might not even pause it and see if you can do this faster than I'm going to do it. So D97 times 100,000 divided by 1 plus that plus D98 times 100,000 divided by 1 plus that to the second plus D99 times 100,000 divided by 1 plus that to the third. I got something. Yeah, I don't need that one. So, so you're probably going faster than I am because I've got some typos in here, but that looks right. And we'll divide that. <coughs> So just to make sure um, we don't leave something out, you know, the issue is going to be parentheses. So let's try it. We'll divide it by L97 plus L98 divided by 1 plus the rate to the first plus 
L99 divided by 1 plus the rate to the second. Let's see if this makes sense. So it's a little bit strange here. This one's, I, I think that might be the right answer. We'll see if I got a typo in there. Uh, I'm going to copy down what we did before, bring it in there. So hopefully this is the right answer, but we'll see. But first of all, let's kind of think about it. From one standpoint, everybody who buys this policy is, is going to uh, get $100,000 back. So, um, and you're going to pay premiums all three years. So it, it seems kind of high, doesn't it? Especially those people who make it past age 98. They're going to pay $55,000 and then $55,000 and then $55,000 in order to get $100,000. Um, but why does it have to be more than that? I do think it's right. We'll see. I might end up eating my words. But um, the problem you're going to have is so many people die at 97 that you're going to have to, you know, if you look back at this table, so many, many more people die at 97 just because you're running out of people. It's not that mortality is getting better. It's just you're running out of people to die. So the death, death rate is still high. The queues are high. They're growing. They're getting higher. But you're just running out of people. And so that last group, those D99s, are going to really get the short end of the stick. Now, they'll still pay their premium at $55,000. When they make it to the end of 98 and they haven't died, you can say, well, I paid $110,000. Why should I pay the last premium? But at that point, they have a choice of not paying the premium and losing the $100,000 or paying $55,000 and getting $100,000. So it's still in their best interest to actually pay the premium. So I'm going to copy this down. It's the same format as for the, um, the level term. And let's, let's try this. So L97 times the premium. One that should fix it, and voila, it does fix it. All right, so you, you should probably go back and do it. I shouldn't have copied down, I should have just redone, but I think I got everything lined up. And that's one way you know it's a nice thing if you get to do this on Excel because you'll know exactly if you got the right answer. So it, that's the definition of a net premium, it always comes out to equal zero at the end. <clears throat> so you know, you think about it, the first person, the people who die at age 97, they pay $55,000 and they get $100,000. So they'll end up with an 80% return. But the other two groups are not too happy. The second group, they're going to pay They're going to pay $110,000 to get $100,000, so they're pretty upset. But they'll still do it, um, you know, because they got a, you know, over half of them, two thirds of them are going to die at their 98th year, so they've got a really good chance of getting $100,000 if they pay $55,000. They'll pay $110,000 in total, but they only pay $55,000 that second year to get the $100,000. And then the third group, they're going to be particularly upset because they're going to pay $166,000 in order to get $100,000. So it's a very unusual product. It'd be hard to think people would really want to buy something like this because uh, the premium is so high relative to what you get. All right, so we've gone through um, the, first five, the first five example problems. You might want to look ahead at the next ones. So we've done these first five. So what we'll do next is really, really, really easy, which is a limit pay. I don't do a limit pay uh, level term because I don't think that really exists in, in reality. So we'll do that real quick. Nothing major there. It's just instead of making three premium payments, we'll only make two. Then I want to get into probably the most important one next week, which is the three-year endowment policy. That's the one where I make you calculate the dollar amount and do the timing. It's the only one on exam. You can see the timing takes quite a bit of time to put out time zero, time one, time two. So this is in, in the endowment policy of one where I want you to do, do
do everything. Get me the premium and get me the uh, the uh, timing. And then you'll see, and this will spend quite a bit of time on this one. Uh, I'm going to give you a policy that's just absolutely crazy. It makes no sense at all. I, although some of these policies you might find pretty interesting. And then we'll do a second one just for practice. And then we'll get into the joint life. So we may not get through all of this next class. We'll see. Um, so anyway, we'll stop it there.